So you are welcome to uh, changes in group structure part three. And this one, we will be looking at solving a question and also doing disposal. But just a quick recap on how we started the whole concept of changes in group structure. If you remember, we said that we have situations where there is, we looked at acquisition. There can be a change in the acquisition. We realize that there can be media acquisition. All right. Then <clears throat> there is also a step acquisition. Then we realize that there can be control to control. Control to control. So these are the issues we dealt with in the acquisition. Now what happened is this. Inside the step acquisition, we said that the only thing, two things happen that you will do the gain, all right? So the gain or loss on fair value, where we will do the, we find the carrying amount of the previously held, previously held interest. And since we are using that interest to top up another purchase, we will find, we now found the fair value also of the previously held interest. All right, held interest. Now the difference between the two was a gain or loss. Now, if it is a gain or loss, where we position them, if you remember, if you are doing a PL consolidation, that one is an investment income. All right. It's an investment income or an investment loss. All right, if it is a loss, all right. But if you are doing a balance sheet, that's, that figure, that gain or loss, should be seated where? In the retained earnings. That is group working, so five. Now, not only that, we said it affects our goodwill computation because we will do fair value of this one. So we will use the fair value in our goodwill computation. We use fair value of previously held interest. Previously held interest. And what else do we do? We will do the additional interest, the fair value of consideration for the additional interest. And this becomes our total purchase consideration. Then we add our NCI at acquisition. All right, then we less fair value of net assets also all right at acquisition so that is the only change that comes in if there is a change in that kind of uh, group structure that is what we learn all right now we also learn control to control and we learn that inside control to control uh what we need to be careful about is our change in the nci and so we said that all that we need to do, and that thing that you would do, you do it before your workings fall. So it's part of your workings fall, but so you have to change the NCI before you do that part. So we will all realize that if, let's say, uh, somebody had, let's say, um, 80% and he moved to 85% by buying what? An extra five. Then we know that the NCI here was 20 and the NCI here will reduce to 15, all right? What did we say? We, will, we said that we will come up with the difference. So it's proportionate, don't forget. So the proportionate, what did you do? You said this minus this, the change is what, five. So we will do five over what, the 20. Multiply by the carrying amount of NCI. Now, how do we find the carrying amount of this NCI? We realize that to find this carrying amount of this NCI, we will need the NCI at acquisition. And when we say the acquisition, we are talking about the fair value of the net asset, all right? Fair value of net assets of SAP 
at the step acquisition. How much did they pay? How much did they value the fair value or the fair value of NCI? Because that is the NCI, fair value of the NCI, all right, at the step acquisition. Then what do we do? We will add what? NCI share, all right, of profit. And how do we find this profit? We said that to find this profit, we will need this net asset, fair value of net asset at step acquisition. Don't forget this one. Minus fair value of net asset before step acquisition. So when we get these two, then we slash it in here all right so this is it so this side is fair value of so fair value of nci at the step acquisition okay fair value of nci at the step acquisition all right fair value of nci at step acquisition this Will be given in the question all right this will be given in the question then this one too will be given in the question it should be given okay at the time of the step acquisition but this one is always what you work for as part of your workings too all right so that is that then you get this now immediately you get this figure that is the one that you are applying the five over 20 on. So this is what we learned, all right? As for the media acquisition, all that you need to do is to do, if it is six months, you do six months, six months, six months, six months, all right? So this is the things we learned in our uh, acquisition. Now with this, let's pick up a question and go through it, all right? A full question and go through it. I have here my March 20, 2023, paper icag paper and let's see how that one will go through all right so this is it so the question reads that uh, below is the financial statement of ibuakwa tanoso and kwadaso as at 31st december 2021 and it says that we have ibuakwa we have all the financial statements here as you can see all right so we have the tangible the investment all right so we have these all right so these are what you have and we are going to go through this and also deal with it now if you look at your equity side these are what you have there is a preference share as you can see so the the rule about a preference share is that if the preference share is treated as share capital then you must add it when you are doing your workings too if it is treated like normally if it is irredeemable because irredeemable are usually treated as share capital. But this one wasn't specific. It said preferences. So preferences, then it means that probably the question is to give us a note on it to explain to us whether that preference is part of equity or a liability. Because preference usually is a liability. All right. So if it is not part of equity, then we will give it to the NCI. If it is part of the equity, then we will use it as part of our workings too. All right. So basically that is that. All right, so it says that Ebuakwa acquired 20 million shares, all right, in Tanoso on January 2019, when the end retained earnings or, and the other reserves of Tanoso was 12 million and 8 million respectively. Okay, so that is the purchase, and we have some figures of retained earnings at acquisition, other reserve at acquisition. The consideration which, uh, which has been offered correctly, which has been recordly uh, correctly accounted accounted for was settled by Ibuakwa using its own share so it has everything has been correctly done so we don't have a problem right okay so that is what we have here and so Ibuakwa share they use a share for share and he used his 7 million shares and the price is at 8 as of January 2019 the fair value of the non controlling interest is 25 so fair value of NCI has been given no 2 
on January 2019, the fair value of the identifiable net assets of Thanos was equal to the above value, except a brand which was which uh, brand with a fair value of two million, which was not validly recorded. So if it was not validly recorded, then we have to do that. The brand was determined to have a useful life of five years. Okay, so that is for us to do our amortization. At 31st December 2021, an impairment review was carried out and on the brand. That showed that the recoverable amount is what? 1.1. No previous impairment loss has been recognized. Okay, so that is this is another thing. So what we will do the correction and also revalue the we do the impairment test. If there is impairment, then fine. All right. So then we will do that. Okay. If Wakwa acquired 10%. 10.5 million shares in Quadra, so at 31st December. So this is another acquisition. So we first find Ebuakwa acquiring Thanoso. All right. So, and Ebuakwa here acquiring Quadra, so. so two subsidiaries for now. All right. So that is that. When the retained earnings and the other reserve was 11 and 10. All right. The amount which was eventually paid to the, okay, it says that Ebuakwa satisfied this by deferring a cash payment for a year. So that is deferred consideration. The amount which was eventually paid uh, to the former shareholders of Wakwa amounted to 40, uh, 40, 49.5 million, sorry. But discounted present value of this payment on the at acquisition was 45. So that is the deferred, the PV is 45. Then between the PV and the 49 will be our hold unwinding. Very good. All right, you are catching up. Ibuakwa correctly recorded these figures. So it means that, it means that since it has been corrected, we won't do any correction. So the unwinding, we won't do because everything has been done. But what has to be in our purchase consideration will be which one? The 45. All right, so take note of that. Take note of that. Then other than the fair value of 3 million on non depreciable asset, no fair value adjustment in respect of quad source net asset is considered necessary at acquisition. So it means that there is only one fair value adjustment, which is the land, all right? And it's an uplift, all right? So that is kind of a fair value, all right? Revaluation. It says that the land's fair value has not been assessed since the acquisition. The fair value of the non-controlling interest in quad so at acquisition is 11 million. So this is the NCI to uh, when... Uh, Ebuakwa was purchasing Quadaso. So we have the NCI too. On 13 December 2020, Tanoso also acquired Quadaso for immediate cash of 6.5. Quadaso's identified bull net asset is approximately adjusted for consolidation. And on this date, it was estimated to be worth 7.2. All right. So this one too is the NCA fair value of net asset estimated to be 7.2. So, aha, uh -huh. that is what we learned here. What we just did here. So, at the step acquisition, the net asset, the, the net asset at the step acquisition, because this is probably another acquisition, is, where are you? It's 72. All right. So, let's take note of that. Because, as you can see, this guy, has already bought uh, Quadaso. So that is what we you see. So there is a, a first bought, there is a second bought through Thanoso. All right. So that is that. And it says that on January 2021, Thanoso sold a piece of machinery to Ibuakwa. Uh, the carrying amount was at that date was five, and its original cost was seven. Thanoso had originally attributed the machinery with a useful life of seven years. And so he said that Tan also made a profit of 20% on cost. So we will do that. We will do that. Ebuakwa depreciate this type of machinery at 10%. Remember, check my video on console adjustment. This one is called uh, PPE transfer. All right. Check that. All right. Goodwill in Tan also is impaired by 10%. And Quadaso, in that in Quadaso, remain unimpaired. Ebuakwa does not hold any preferences in both uh, Thanoso and Quadaso. So this one tells you that that preference here is no equity. So you attribute it to the NCI, all right? Okay, now 
This one says that a worker's trade payables include 7 million due to foreign supplies. This has not been updated with the related exchange law. So we will update it. So we just that we will add, all right. And it says that this 7 million is already included. So we will just add the loss, all right. So it's a loss to PNL and it's an additional, additional uh, liability to the payables, all right. So we are supposed to prepare all right, uh, statement of financial position. All right, uh, maybe I won't use this because I am teaching. All right, this note. Okay, so that is that. So let's now run through the question. What do we normally do? We need to do our group structure, right? Group structure. So workings one, according to IFRS three, let's do our group structure. And let's tell the examiner everything we are doing is in millions. Okay. So now group structure, we have a buakwa. A buakwa. Who is buying into Tanoso? And per what we see here, he is buying 20 million shares of Tanoso. So how um, so we have 20 million over turn or so share. How much is turn or so share? So as we can see here, turn or so share is 50 and which is priced at two. So it means that 50 price at two will give us 25. Okay. So it means it will be 20 over 25. And what percentage is that? 20 over 25. That is 80%. And what day did this one happen? The day this one happened is on 1st January. All right, 2019. Very important. So what is that date to our reporting date? 20. So reporting date is when? December 2021. So it means we have 2019 full year, 2020 and 2021. So that makes it three years. All right. So that is that. So we've dealt with that one. So let's go up. And it says that when he did this, uh, the retained earnings and the other reserve has been given and the consideration given, all right, and the NCI2 given. That is what we have in this information. So uh, take note of that. We will use it in our workings too. Then uh, this one too tops up that. Okay, so that is also useful for our workings too. Then we have this Ebuakwa, all right, buying Kwadaso. All right, before we look at the Buakwa buying Kwadaso, we should remember that there was Tanoso also buying Kwadaso here. All right, so read the full question. Other than that, you can make a mistake. So this one, we also know that this one bought Kwadaso. So that should extend your line. Then since we have drawn that, then we can come back and do the drawing for this one that Ebuakwa is buying into Quada. So, so let's do that. So this one too is 10 million shares. Now we know that the, the price of this one is at two, which means that this guy's to this guy's own to, if we are to check, it will be 30 divided by two, and that is 15. So he's buying 10. 0.5 of that 15. So how much is that? 10.5 over 15. So that gives me 70%. Good. And what date is he doing this? The date he's doing this is 31st December 2019, right? So he's doing it at 31st December 2019. And that date to our reporting date will be two years, is that not it? Two years. So watch this. As he has bought this, this one already means what? Control. So immediately we must do acquisition accounting. Then what uh, Tan also bought into this one is 1.5 shares. So we all know that the worker share is 15. So when we do 1.5 shares, 1.5 over 15, that is like 10%, right? 1.5, 15 is 
And what date is this? The date of this one is 30th December 2020. And that is how many years? One year to the reporting date. But most importantly, it's 31st, right? Most importantly, what you should realize is that he had control. The parents already had control. So buying this one is just an extra. So that is what we call the step acquisition, all right? Or control to control, sorry. So this one is control to control. He already has control of 70%. And he just bought indirectly another 10%. So this one is different. It is not a step acquisition where you already had some uh, a previously held interest, which was not a subsidiary interest, and he bought to top up to become a subsidiary. No, this one is already having only the subsidiary, as you can see, 70%. Then he did an indirect extra. So it is not a step acquisition, as you see. It is what? Control to control. And we learned that control to control is just a relationship between equity shareholders. So what do we do? Uh, how that we have established this, so let's do the workings too. So we have fair value of net assets of, let's do for ton or so here. Then we will do another one for quad or so. All right. So we have at acquisition, at reporting. Then we have post acquisition. All right. So let's fish out all the issues that embodies uh turn also then we, we when you finish we do for everything that embodies what quad so because he has two subsidiaries so let's go to don't forget your formula it is e then you do a then you do l all right so don't forget that okay so this is what we have let's look at our e what is our ordinary capital so the ordinary capital for turn also is 50, and don't forget everything is in millions. 50, 50. So, all right. Then the next thing we have is the preference share. We were told that they don't keep the preference share. So, the preference share will be strictly added to your NCI. All right. So, that is that. Then we have what? Retained earnings. So, the retained earnings, retained earnings at reporting is 40. Then we were told the retained earnings when they acquired this company. And it says that when he acquired it, the retained earnings was 12, all right? So 12. So what is the difference? 28, right? 12 minus 40. The movement is 28, so positive 28. All right. Then we have other reserves. So other reserve here is uh, no. This one is meant to be... 66 sorry i copied the wrong figure so be careful be careful you can repeat same too so we know here is 12 but here retain earnings line is 66 all right so it means that 66 minus 12 the movement is 54 all right so the other reserve one will be for that one so the other reserve when he bought it, the other reserve here was eight. And at reporting, what do we have? 23. So 23 minus eight gives me a positive movement of 15. All right. So that is that. Okay. Then we come to the other informations to do. So here is cleared. We visit the other information to do the A part and E, L, if there is. So oh, this one was about control. This one too was about control. There was a brand, yeah. So when they bought it, everything was equal except a brand. So there is a fair value adjustment brand. Put that in red. Fair value adjustment brand. How much is that? We are told that at the date of acquisition is two, two. All right, so this is that. Then we are told that the brand had a fair value adjustment amortization. So fair value adjustment amortization. We know it is two. How many useful life? Five. All right. Then we multiply by the years. That is why this thing is very important. So multiply by the years of three. So we have two million. All right. Divided by five years. Multiply by three. All right. And that gives me 1.2. So 
which means I need to do 1.2, 1.2. All right, so that is that. Now, we are told that the brand, after this, uh, an impairment review was conducted and the recoverable amount is 1.1. So if I do this, I should be having 0 0.8, right? Now, if 0 0.8 has gone into 1.1, then it means that there is actually uh, minus 0 0.8. There's actually a revaluation of 0 0.3. But what does IAS 38 tells you? This is something you learn from the standard, that the IAS 38 prohibits the revaluation of brand. Be careful. So since it prohibits, this revaluation will never stand. So let's make a note, but note, IAS 38 prohibits the revaluation of IA brand. All right, take note of this. Please take note of these things because these things come from the standards. All right. So you that one is rendered user. It's not only brand, there's trademark and all those other intangible assets. So if you want to know more of this IAS 38, then visit my lecture on IAS 38 in the uh, intangibles. Yeah. So that is that. Be careful. All right. So that is that. Then uh, is that all we have? about concerning TAN also. All right, so this one too talks about the acquisition of Quadaso, and this one too is about fair value in Quadaso, and this one too is about another acquisition. Then this is about TAN also, TAN also sold. Yeah, so there is a, a what do we call a PAP, all right? But this PAP is a PPE. So it's not PAP inventory. This is PAP PP. How do we do PAP PP? This one is saying that he transferred the tin and the carrying, he said that he sold a piece of machinery to Obuakwa. The carrying amount of this machinery at the date of sale was five. So we can do something about that. What do you do? You have watched my video on adjustment. Remember, we say you would do without the transfer. How? Would things be and with transfer? Then you have your PAP adjustment. All right. So we are told that the carrying amount is uh, five, but it originally cost was seven. So we have cost of seven. And this is ton or so if it is not transferred. And this is Kwada, uh, Ibuakwa, who is receiving it. All right. So at cost, it's seven. And at carrying amount, it is five. That tells you that the Akum dip is what? Two. All right. Two. Now, we are told that they now transfer the thing to uh, Ibuakwa. So they transferred it to Ibuakwa. Now, when they were transferring, he said Tan also make a profit on 20% on cost. So 20%, this is going at a profit of 20%. So that makes it 1.20 multiplied by 5. So it means they transferred you to this guy. This guy received it at 6. That is that. Okay. So it means there is a pop of what? 1. All right. So 1 CD pop. All right. So that is that. Then... What do you do? You said the current year's depreciation is that a Boakwa depreciate this thing 10%. So 10% of this will give us 0 0.6, right? Then this guy depreciates it. Originally attributed a useful life of seven years. So it means every year he depreciates it. So that will be like one, seven years, which means the current amount here is four. The current amount here, this minus this should be like 5.4. All right, so what is the difference? So once you did this minus this, this one minus this, so minus 0.6, so minus 0 0.6 minus minus one. That gives me 0 0.4. All right, so 
this side will be what this one too gives me 1.4 so it has balanced all right now whoever transfer to the other what happens so this one it is the subsidiary that is transferring so what do you do you will debit the subsidiary all right you will debit the subsidiary okay so take take note of that you have to debit the subsidiary because he is doing the transfer is a pop he has gotten some unrealized profit and it is unrealized all right so you debit the workings too all right then what do you do uh, this one will go to our pp all right we are going to credit our pp that one will be in the balance sheet all right then this one will be a, also a debit because it has to be balancing a debit to our working so what five all right, so that is that. So debit, debit, making 1.4, all right? If this side has been a bracket, then you know that you are going to credit, all right, your workings five. So that is that. So if I say I can write, actually write a credit, but this one is not a subtraction, all right? So take note of that, all right? So please balance it carefully with your adjustment. So that tells you that in turn also, we need to bring a pop inventory of minus one. All right, minus one. A pop PP, sorry, of minus one. All right, is there any other thing? Uh, this is for Goodwill and this is for Ebuakwa. So it means we can close this one up. All right, so let's close it and have our totals. Like I always say, for exam purposes, I'm not interested in the middle one, all right? So the first side is 50 plus 12 plus 8 plus 2. That gives me 72. And this one, I have 54 plus 15. All right, minus 1.2 minus 1. And that gives me 66.8. All right, so that is that. All right, so do this thing with understanding, okay? So uh, after that, let's try and do that of who? Uh, the second subsidiary so we have fair value of net assets of in this case who do we have here uh quadraso right at we have at acquisition at reporting then we have post is stated capital is how much ordinary capital this is um 30, right? So 30, 30, and yes. All right. Then what do we have here? Retain earnings. The retain earnings that he has, this one is 56, right? So 56. Okay. Then the 56, how much was it at when Ebuakwa bought him? Because that is when uh, acquisition accounting operates. Ebuakwa bought him. When did the Buakwa buy Quadra? So this is it. And when he bought it, the other reserves and this thing was 11 and 10. So we have 11. All right. Then the other reserves is 10. So the other reserve here is 8. That gives a negative movement of 2. All right. So that is that. Then this one, 2, gives a movement of 56 minus 11. 5, 6 minus 11. 45. All right. So that is that. Then is there any other thing that concerns the that quad so as part of footnote? I think I saw one. This was it. Other than the fair value uplift. Uh -huh. So this is it. And it ends here. All right. So this is what we have. So there is a fair value adjustment. And that fair value adjustment is land on acquisition. So that is three and three. So the movement is, but land, we don't depreciate land. So the question even help you, non-depreciable land. All right. So basically uh, that is that. Is there any other thing concerning this man that we have not done? I don't think so. So we've gone through everything, right? So let's total, we have 30 plus 11 plus 10 plus 3. That gives me 54. And this side technically is 43. 
All right, you can do this middle if you want to, but for time's sake, I can just add this one up to be 97, this one and this one to get the movement. All right, so now we are good. All right, so we, no we now need to do our goodwill quickly. Goodwill. We will need our purchase consideration, but guess what? At this time, this thing was, we are doing this goodwill at what time? Not when they did the control to control, but at this date. So this is it. This is, this is the date we are doing. This is the date control was achieved. So if we are doing goodwill, we will need our purchase considerations. Now, goodwill, we are doing it into the two companies. All right. So we let's have Tanoso. And let's have what? Quadaso. Quadaso. So we have our purchase consideration. Now, what is the purchase consideration? As at the time, the 70 percent was done in Quadaso, and as at the time also that uh, this one was done in Tanoso. So let's go here. It says that they used 75, 7.5 million shares. So it's 7.5 million shares. All right. And the price was at eight, but the price here is two. So which means that in stated capital level, you will do uh, this one multiplied by two, and that is going to stated capital. So 7.5 by two, that is 15. All right, then 7.5 by the extra six, so this one is to stated capital, then 7.5 by the extra six is 45. That one must go to a share premium, all right? Normally, that is that. So if you add together, it is 60. So that is that. So that is what you should take note of, all right? But the good news is that I said the consideration which has already been accounted for. So it means the share premium and things has been accounted for, all right? So this guy, what is the acquisition when they were buying that 70%? Ibuakwa bought Tano, so the, uh -huh, this is the deferred consideration. So the PC was a deferred consideration of what? 45, all right? So the present value, and they said this one too has correctly been what? Recorded, so we won't do the unwinding, all right? So take note of that. Then after we've gotten this, what do you bring? You do your NCI at acquisition, right? And these ones were given as fair value. So this one, the fair value of the non-controlling interest here is 25. And when he was buying this, what was the fair value of the non-controlling interest? Uh, so deferring this, the amount was the PV. And so we have this, but where is the fair value of that when they were acquiring? Okay. Okay, we have something here. On other than that, it says that the, and it talks about the fair value of the NCI in quarter, so it's 11, so 11. All right, that is still a relationship between the Buakwa and quarter, so, so that is that. So what do we do next? We will less, what? Fair value of net assets at acquisition. This one is clearly 54, right? So we have it here. We have it here. Then the other one was how much? How much do we have? Oh, pen, 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 board. I need to be on speed. All right. So we have here 72. That's what we have. 72. So this is it. Then let's find the totals and consider our impairment. So we have 60 plus 25 plus minus 72. That gives me 13. Then this one is 45 plus 11 minus 54. That is two. And we are told that impairment of goodwill, this one is 10%. All right, we had it somewhere here. 10% in turn also, so there is impairment of 1.3. Don't forget, this one is fair value method, so the impairment will be shared. 1.13 minus 1.3 gives me 
11.7. All right, then this one, there was no impairment, so it will be two. Telling me that my total goodwill now is 13.7, right? Goodwill carry down. So 13.7, right there, I need to start preparing my balance sheet. All right, so let's prepare our balance sheet. So what are we going to do? We have a Buaka group. Statement of financial position as at uh as at with date 31st uh December and we have 2021. All right, so clearly that is that. So we put in our currency and everything is million. We've had our goodwill. So just record so that by the time it is start work, you've already done 13.7. All right, so that is that. Right there, when you do that, be fast and repeat the other thing. So we have tangible, assets where we have three five eight plus sixteen nine point five plus one twenty and don't forget we said that we will minus what one point four that is from our workings too do you remember so these are the reasons why you need to do this thing you don't wait till the end so this was it, 1.4, we less 1.4. And again, uh, there was a land here, so we should add plus three, all right? So that one to coming from our workings too. That, that's the reason why you should know it time, because at this point, you've seen everything concerning the PP. You've already seen it all. So that is that. And there was a brand that came in. And the brand, we had two minus eight, this thing was 1.2. 1, 1 so that one is 0 0.8. So let's add the assets. We have uh, 358 plus 169.5 plus 120 minus 1.4 plus 3. And that gives me 649.1. So immediately you have your good rule. You must be ginger to be doing all these things. Then there is investment. investment so what do we have inside the investment so inside the investment we have 170 so the 170 don't forget we need to take off all the investments that they've done all right all the investment now after 170 what do we have we have plus 6.5 then all the purchase considerations that we did all right, so all the purchase consideration we have minus where are they in our goodwill computation? We have 60 and 45, and the other one, the other one was how much? How much did Tan also buy a Boakwa? Where are you? Also, they also bought with purchase consideration of 6.5. So Let's do that. So it means the 6.5 is gone, will be gone. And we had another 60 and we have another 45. So basically that is that. So let's total this one. So this one is 170. So plus one, uh, 6.5 as well. Then minus all purchase considerations. That is 6.5 minus 60 minus 45. All right. That tells you that there's an extra investment they are probably holding and the balance is what? 65. All right. So be careful. Always do that. 65. All right. Is there any other thing left hanging? So we are done with the asset. So the this side, then there is CA. Okay. CA is 
264 plus 172 plus 116. What is the total of our NCR? 65 plus 0. 0.8 plus 649.1 plus 13.7. All right. And that gives me 728.6. All right, so that is that. Then what about this side, which is 264 plus 172 plus 116. There is no adjustment concerning the cash. All right, so that is why I can close it out like that. They, they, we didn't read any adjustment pertaining it. So 552.0. So that gives me, so plus, uh, what do we have? 728. Uh, point six. So if I add that, that gives me one two eight zero point six. So this should be the balancing figure we are uh, we will be chasing in the other side of the whole story. So uh, hopefully we can get it. All right. So that is that. So always make sure that you are and please get a soft calculator. Okay. Always make sure that you are speed. All right. So now let's look at our equity aspects. We have not drawn all the necessities yet, but of course, you don't need to waste time. Here, what do you have? You have your stated capital, which is your ordinary shares. So ordinary shares, parent only. So that is 180. There was a share premium, but they told us that these people did the correct entries. So 180. So that is that. So now you know that there is preference here, which will be added to the uh, the NCI. Then you know there is what retained earnings. Okay, so the group it will come via group retained earnings. So group RE, which will come via our workings five. We will do that. Then there is also other reserves. Okay, so for the interim we have fifty. Okay, so that is it. So you put it down. Uh, I think. Then we will bring in our NCI, right? So after this thing, we will bring in our NCI, which is also our workings four. All right. So you put that down. Then after all these things, you will work your liability. So now what we are going to do is to go back and work our workings four and work our workings five. Then we come to bring it in. So you have to be fast with things. All right. You have to be very, very fast with things. All right. The machine is freezing now. So let's wait some more. So even with that, before we go and do that, we know current liabilities has been given. So let's do the current liability side. Then know that there is the only side we should focus on will be the equity side. So this one, what do we have? We have 50 plus, mm -hmm. no, it's 232169129. So 232 plus 169.129 plus one, two, nine, plus the loss, exchange loss, which we should top up, which was two, all right? So basically that is that. That exchange loss would also be a loss against our PNL. So if I add this one, two, three, two, three, two, plus one, six, nine, plus one, two, nine, one, two, nine, plus two. That gives me five, three, two. So we can also jot that one down here. Five, three, two. Okay, so that is that. So let's go and work the workings four and the workings five and come back. This is uh, where we ended. Like before, and I told you that before you work your workings four, you have seen that this one, there is a control to control. So do your control to control. Very, very important. Now, what did we learn under control to control? You see, what has happened is that the guy bought um, 70 already and he did an indirect purchase again. Now, so the indirect purchase, what we are going to do is that we are going to do, if you check our group structure, we need to find out what the parent is having in there. 
So this thing is 80 and 10. So we need to find out 80% of 10. 80% of 10 is 8, right? So that is the extra purchase he has done. All right. He, the parent, has done for the control to control. So we will do 80% of 10%, which is 8, telling us that uh, he did, he has moved from NCI, that is 20%. To an NCI, 88 will make it what? So 80% of this is 8. And he had 70% uh, in there before. Okay, so it's actually 70%. He had 70% in there before. So as at the time, he has NCI of 30 because he bought 70 directly. And now the NCI is going to reduce to what percentage? Uh, now that he has 88, the NCI will be reduced to like, oh, no, he had 70%. So the NCI will be reduced to 22. Yes, 22%. So that is that. So it means that our change will be this minus this over this, which is 8 over 30. Don't forget that. Proportionate change. Then we have to multiply this thing by our, our CA of <laughs> NCI. Do you remember? If I even started today's class with that, but we did it yesterday as well, all right, in yesterday's video. Now, how do we find the CA? So let's find the CA. We said the CA, we will need the NCI at acquisition of the, when the new control Feather purchase was done. So what is that NCI? So this one, where will we find the information? This is it, right? All right. So this is it. We have some information here. Well, so this one is the uh, machine. So this is it. Good. This is it. So now we know there is cash pay. We will use our cash pay. All right, so we want the NCI at acquisition. All right, so where would the NCI at acquisition be? Do we have it in here? Do we have it in here? This one doesn't give us the NCI at acquisition. So this is the NCI at acquisition. NCI at acquisition. So that is that. So... We do NCI at acquisition. And the NCI at acquisition here is 11. Don't forget that. And what do we do again? After that, we do the NCI share. All right. So up to the step acquisition. So NCI share up to that. Do you remember what we did? We said we would need the net asset at reporting and net asset at end. All right. So that is that. So please take note of that. Now, let's go up. Let's go very up. Because I started today's class with such. You see this? NCI at acquisition. All right? So that's, that's what we need. The NCI at acquisition. We have found that. Then what we need now is the NCI share. All right? Which, one, which is this one? The NCI at step. Net asset at step. All right, minus the net asset before the step. All right, so that is that is all we need. Okay, so please, this is the NCI because the guy is buying into this company. All right, it's a feather purchase. So the first thing we realized was that we need to do the CA. Now the CA, we like I've said, you need the NCI at acquisition when they acquired it at the 70. All right. Then every share of profit that they need to share before the Feather 8 came in. So when they bought it, the NCR at its acquisition at 70% long time was 11. All right. So that is that. But they've been sharing profit since. Because if you check when this was bought, it was bought in 2019. And therefore, by this date, so this one is December 2019. This one is December 2020. Are you saying that then when they bought it 
there has never been any profit they need to share to increase their NCI. They, they had. So we need to now find a profit. And how do we find a profit? For what we have here, we need, you know, you know this is how we find the profit. You need the NCI at acquisition, then, uh, sorry, net asset at acquisition, net asset at reporting, then you strike it. All right. So now pertaining to this one, what do you do? Do we have the NCI uh, net asset at acquisition? So we know that at this point, he still had 30% NCI because 70% was bought. So we are multiplying it by what is the net asset at acquisition? At acquisition of when they bought the extra eight. Uh, where is that? So this is it. It says that on this date, 1.5, Quad that source identifiable net asset as appropriately adjusted for consolidated purposes. On this date was 72. So this is it. 72. Minus the one we had done long time when the first purchase was done. All right. So when the first purchase was done, what was the net asset? 54. Good. So that is what we do. All right. So, 54. So, 72 minus 54. Multiply, that's 18. Multiply by 0. 0.3. That gives me 5.4. So, this is it, 5.4. So, it tells me that my NC, uh, the CA of my NCI at this point is 16.4. All right. So, that is that. Basically, that is that. So you remember what we used to do, okay? What we used to do is that we have found our CA. We find our CA. So we can do the cash paid. The cash paid for that particular purchase was what? Uh, 6.5, right? When they bought that one. This is it. 6.5. So we can say cash paid 6.5. All right, then the decrease in NCI. Don't forget, there is 8 over 30 to be applied on this figure. So that this figure that we have, we multiply by 8 over 30. And that gives me 4.37. So the adjustment to be done will be 4.37. So 4.37. So decrease in NCI is 4.37 so decrease in nci in nci is 4.37 uh the question says we should be rounding everything to the nearest figure so probably we can make this one to be 4.4 all right so you can round it so when you are solving it please endeavor to round it up all right, so that is that. So that means the OCE will be what? So we have 6.5 minus 4.37. That gives me 2.13. Okay, so basically. No, I think the cash paid, we need to be very careful. Yeah, this guy didn't buy everything so sorry about that i need to check that he, he the cash paid is what s 80 percent of what s used to buy ss ah, that bit thank you because if we don't do that we have used as if the, he paid the 6.5 he didn't pay the 6.5 so it should be 80 percent of what s used to buy ss careful careful all right so what is 80% of what S used to buy SS? So 80% of this 65 will be how much? So let's push it. All right. So this is what we have.
So it's paid. So we need to do 80% of what S used to buy SS. So 80% of 6.5 gives me 5.2. So 5.2. And when we let this decrease, minus, uh, it looks as if all the figures are point, point, two point. So you can also round this one to make it, uh, because the question said we should round all the figures to the nearest one. So here, I think we should make it 4.4. Okay, so that is that. So this one has to, the 4.3, yeah, 3.7, let's make it 4.4, okay. And please don't forget, we are doing that only because we are rounding up figures. So 4.4, so here is 5.2. So 5.2 minus 4.4, that gives me 0 0.8. So the decrease here, 0 0.8. So that this one is going to against my OCE. So we normally we credit cash, uh -huh. you debit NCI. So please, we will do a debit to NCI. Then as you see, we need to now do a debit to OCE, as you can see. All right, because a debit to OCE, and the debit to the NCI will sum up to the cash. All right, so let's go to our balance sheet, the OCE that we have there. Let's treat that and write that one down so that the only thing we are left to do will be our NCI and what our group retained earnings, which will be quick pro co. Thank you. So let's go there. There's our balance sheet. All right, so this one is minus. 0.8, all right, so that would be 42, oh, okay, so 50 minus 0.8, that is 49.2, come on, 49.2. So the only two spaces we are left to fill is the NCI and the group working is five, all right? So let's do those ones quickly. Now, we've known that our NCI has faced some adjustments. So we need to be very careful with our NCI. So this NCI, you have NCI for Tanoso and Kwadaso. All right, so that is that. Okay, so NCI at acquisition, uh, given that my board is delaying, let's see if we can use another board and with that one to we can we have to go and copy uh, the balance sheet all together all right so let's see um okay so i'll use another board to do my nci and working five then i'll come back to this board i mean that that is the best way other than that it is slowing down so let's refresh the board get a new one All right, so this one will make it go faster. Let's do our NCI. So we have NCI in Tanoso, and we have NCI in Quadaso. All right, so the NCI at acquisition in Quadaso and in Tanoso. All right, I think the question gave it to us then. Uh, NCI, when they bought this, one was 25, all right, so this is it. And it is in our goodwill workings too, okay? So, and the NCI, when they bought um, um, Quadaso, where are you? That is here, 11, right? So this is it, 11. All right, so now we are now coming to do the control to control adjustment of things. So what do you normally do? NCI share, right, of post acquisition, which in this case, this guy's NCI was 20%. This guy's own moved from 30% before and it went to 22%. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to do for this one is 20% multiplying 
uh, 66.8. That's the post uh, acquisition, all right? So 66.8, that gives us, so 66.8 by 2.2. All right, that gives me 13.36. But since we are rounding figures, so this one will be 13.4, all right? So that is that. So we have that. Then this one had, um, how do you do the NCI share for this one? Remember, his own is 30% and we did it before. We had 72 minus 54, all right? The 72 was this and the 54 was the one that we did. So, and when we did that, I think we had 5.4. So, so we know this one, was the difference was 18 multiplied by 0.3. Yeah, it was 5.4. That is his NCI share. That is that. So you have that. You have that. But bear in mind, at a point, he was also at uh, uh, 22. He was also at 22. When he had this, there was a fair value adjustment, uh, control to control adjustment that we did. Do you remember? The one that we reduced, so cash paid, then decrease in OC NCI. So what was the decrease in NCI? Decrease in NCI was, uh, uh, we did eight over 30, right? Multiply by 16.4. Yeah, remember, because the board is, I've changed board, it is very difficult to go back. So it was eight over 30. And that one, we get 4.4. So adjustment, yes, we had 4.4. So we now reduce it. All right, that is the adjustment that has to be done. So there is a reduction. Then now, we remember that there was another 22% uh, NCI. You see, this one ended in 2019. 2020, started in 20, December 2019. So it ran through 2020. Now we have to do the 2021 part. As at the time, he owned what we call 22%. 22% is what he owned. Now, with that, we are going to do the NCI share. Right now, it is between 72 and what? Our 97. That is the 97 minus 72. Somebody will ask, where from this 97? Well, check our workings too. If you check our workings too, you will realize that there was, oh, you realize that there was um, the fair value of net asset in Quada, so at reporting. So let me go to that board. So this is what I was referring to. You see, normally we share this. We share this 43. But remember, this 54 changed to 72 along the line. Because this 54 is the fifth is the fair value of net asset at the first acquisition, the first one, the 71. But they didn't stay at 70, they went to uh 70%, they moved to 78. Do you remember? They moved to 78 for the NCI to become 22. So if you go to our workings five, you'll be using 78. But at a point in their life, they were also at 70. So you do the two. So that 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 is what you should see. Uh, this one, the purchase was, uh, I mean, one year ahead, right? But first one was 2019. The second one was 2020. So you see that there's a one year gap. Sometimes it can be six months. You have to be very careful. All right, so now this thing is no longer 54, it is 72. So we did this 97 minus this. So we don't use this figure anymore, the 43 anymore, because there has been a step, a, a control to control, let me say a further additional purchase. All right, so that is the reason why we do that. But before all this happened, they had 54. And this 72 and this 54, we will use it as the, uh, what do we call it, for calculating the decrease in 
NCI, the NCI profit sharing part. That is what we did. All right. So this is where the 97 is coming from. So let's go to our new board. All right. We will come back and slot the figures into this uh, old board. Then we will see if we have balanced the question or not. It's a little dicey, right? But you make it. Okay, so that is where we are now. So if I now do the difference, which is 97 minus 72, that's 25. Then I share at this point is 0. 0.22. Then I have 5.5. .5. So I've shared this. Then we had impairment, NCI share of impairment. Of impairment. And how much is that? This guy will be 20% of the uh, impairment of 1.3, right? So what is 0. 0.2 by 1.3? That gives me 0. 0.26. And since we are rounding things, should I make it 0. 0.3? So I'll have to make it 0. 0.3. All right, and this is impairment. We need to deduct, all right? So that is that. There's one last thing left. This is a complex group and there was a control to control. There's something we always do in complex groups in the NCI. What is that? Less what the NCI of what S used to buy SS. So 20% of the 6.5 he used to buy. If you remember, we did the we did the 80% of that when we were doing the cash paid. All right, so now we do 0. 0.2 by 6.5, and that one gives me 1.3. All right, so that is it, 1.3. So now, here we go, our NCI. And don't forget, there were preferences which we add to our NCI. All right, so preference share, they didn't own it, and this one is what? 40 and 33, so 40 and 33 whatever answer we are getting we are adding so we have 1.3 minus 0.3 plus 13.4 plus 25 and that gives me 39.4 so that is that then i will add it to this 40 so 25 plus 13.4 minus 0.3 plus 1.3 all right, then plus 40. Okay, so 79.4. That is what I have. Yeah, then this side is 11 plus 54, 5.4 plus 5.5 minus 4.4. And that gives me 17.5 plus 33, right? The preference share is 13. Wow. This one is 13, so plus 13. All right, that gives me 30.5. And together, plus 79.4, that gives me 109.9. So don't forget our NCI is what? 109.9, okay. So let's do the group retain earnings. So we're going to slot this 109.9 sum in, inside our figure. So let's do the group retain earnings. So parents retain earnings, where are you? 330. Then a CI share of post acquisition in Tanoso. That is 80% of the 66.8. All right, then the CI share of that in Ebuakwa, we have two, right? No, in Kwada, so Ebuakwa is the parent. Ebuakwa is the parent. So in Kwada, so Kwada, so. And that was two, just as we did the two here, we are going to do same. So we first, we have 70, 
percent of this. This one was 18, right? 72 minus 54 was 18. So you will do uh, first, you have 70 of that 18. Please, the 18 is the difference between the, what we have here. Oh, what we have here, 72 minus 54. Then, at the point, it now became 78% of, what is the difference of the other side to uh, 97 minus 72, this side is 25. Okay, so that, that we have 25. Okay, so point, multiply by 0.78, that gives me 19.5. This side, 10.7 by 18 gives me 12.6. Then 0.8 by 66.8, that gives me 53.44. So rounding it up will be 0.4, okay. Then we have two things to bring. Pop PP, oh. So two things to bring, PAP PP. Here, we were supposed to deduct 0 0.4, all right? Then that was from our workings too. Then uh, the exchange loss of two, right? Exchange loss two is two. All right, so basically that is that. Everything has been well taken care of, right? So now let's close out everything. Impairment sharing, good. Impairment sharing. This guy, it was in this one, so that would be 80% of 1.3. by 1.3. That is 1.04. So uh, rounding it up will be 1.0, right? So that is that. I think the rounding may cause problem, but I wish I could have written everything as it were. Okay. So uh, the impairment, when we said it here, it was how much? Okay, so it will be fine. So, uh, this one is 0 0.3 and it was 1.3. So if the one is here, it's fine. I think we will be good to go. All right. So what is our NCI? Don't forget this figure because we are going to carry it into a new board. 33, 0 plus 53.4 plus 12.6 plus 19.5 plus, oh, sorry, minus 0. 0.4 minus 2 minus 1. And that gives me 412.1. So these are the two figures missing in our balance sheet. So this one is 412 and 109 so let me write it somewhere uh 109.9 then 412.1 i think this two will round up this side because this is 0.90 this two will round up for us so let's go to the other board and get it complete This is doubled. All right. So we slot it in. We see, we check the balancing and we are good to go. So the next time we meet again, what we're going to do is to do the disposal aspect. If there is a question we pick, then we go to console foreign. Then lastly, we will do a consolidated cash flow. All right. So this is it. Let's open it up. Okay, this was our balance sheet. Is this happening? So what are the figures we had? We had our uh, 
this one is working five was four one two point one. So let's total. Then so four one two point one plus one eighty plus we have forty nine point two. So that total is um what we have to be what we have here to be this this one is point six four one point three. So that is what we have, 641.3. Then we add the end. So what was the figure we had here? Is it 109.9.9? Will it make it balance? Let me find out. If it doesn't balance, then it means you've done something wrong. We need to just go back and do a quick check. All right. All right. So if I have 641.3 and I'm adding one. 09.9 that's the figure i wrote 09.9 plus 532 i'm having 1283.2 not making it balance there's a difference of 3.4 what is causing that so let's go and check these two figures well uh the 412 and the 109 so let's go back to our former board I might have missed something, right? So let's go and check. So let's check. So that board will be this one. I might have missed something. That is the exact. You can do, you miss something. You just do a quick check. So in actual sense, doing this paper requires that you use um, 30 minutes. Yeah, I've seen my problem. You see, less this, I, I opened it up. So you see, it can happen to you as well. So let's let's correct that. So this one is supposed to be a less. Yeah, that's why the difference is 3.6, because this is it. So th this is it. So I wrote less, I put add. So you, it can happen to you too. So let's be careful. 25 plus 13.4 minus 0.3 minus 1.3 and that is actually 36 36.8 all right so if i add to the 40 what am i getting 76.8 so it means my total nci cannot be this so it should be plus 30.5 so that is 107.3. All right. So this is this 107.3 we should rather put in. So let's go back. 107.3. I'm keeping it on this so that we don't repeat the mistakes. All right. Where are you? I think this is it. Here we are. Finally. Means I need to delete this one. Let me delete you. This one too should be gone. This one. board is very slow. The reason I had to change. Sometimes when the machine overstays, these are the consequences. So we had um, 107.3, right? That looks more likely of it. All right. So if I add my 107.3 to the 641.3, the, the 0. This 0. 0.6 has appeared right now. This 0. 0.6. All right. So now it gives me 748.6. Then I add 532 plus 532. So here we go. It now balances. All right. So it now balances into 1280.6. Perfect. All right. So good work. And that is it. So um, continue to practice. This is the very first time, I think, in an IC exam, they mixed up a control to control with a mixed group. So be very careful. All right. We will do the disposer. And the disposer, we have 
uh, food disposal, disposing everything, partial disposal, living as an associate, partial disposal, living an investment, and we have a partial disposal that you still maintain control. All right, so we will look at that, all right, and we'll look at foreign consolidation and cash flow also. So thank you very much for staying with me. God bless you. See you in the next video.